Hello again, Monaco. Yeah, your fifth podcast lecture in our boot camp unit and your third Google Classroom assignment for homework credit. We're talking about classification of matter today. Classification of matter and particle diagrams, that is. You have classified organisms, you have classified rocks, okay, and you've probably classified matter before. So this should be a review of some things that you should already know, I hope. Okay. First things first, you've got to understand a particle diagram. Particle diagrams are basically particles in a box. They're very useful to show how atoms and mixtures and molecules and all that stuff are arranged at the atomic level. You can't ever see these atoms or these mixtures like this, but it's a good model to use to describe to other people in a visual format what's going on inside a certain piece of space. Okay, like a picture's worth a thousand words. That's what we got to get familiar the pictures of particle diagrams. So first things first, elements. There's two types of elements. Atoms, single spheres by themselves. In this case, they're green. They could be any color in the rainbow, but single spheres by themselves. Or diatomic molecules. Okay, Diatomic molecules are two of the same type of atom that are connected together. They're technically molecules, but since it's the same type of atom, we call it an element. This is literally O. Two, oxygen that we're breathing in and out right now, consuming it with a purpose, is a diatomic oxygen molecule, and for all intents and purposes, we call that an element. Now, we're not breathing in a pure oxygen right now, unless you're on some kind of respirator, which I hope you're not, but the oxygen molecules that we are breathing in right now are diatomic molecules and are considered an element. Next thing's next, mixtures. We're actually breathing in a mixture Air is not a pure element, it is a mixture, but within that mixture there are monoatomic atoms and diatomic atoms, or molecules, pardon me. This picture is showing you all the single monoatomic atoms. In this case, they're green and orange. I apologize. There's diatomic molecules in these mixtures too. You can tell they're mixtures because the particle diagrams show different colors and even different sizes. Some of the particle diagrams that you can create in your mind might have different shapes even. The point is, is you should have a key and be consistent when you're making a particle diagram. And lastly, mixtures can show compounds. You can see this little one that looks like Mickey Mouse there, a green with two reds on it. I'm not sure exactly what compound that is because I don't have a key for what element the red spheres and the green spheres are, but I do know that since they're connected like that, it makes a compound. It is not an element. Okay. And then the last little bit here, we've got to clarify what a compound is. Compounds are combinations of different elements that make molecules. Pure compound, that is what this diagram is showing you. Inside that box, even though they're all arranged to different ways, there's only one type of particle inside that box. There's nine of these Mickey Mouse looking things, and we'd call it pure. These over here on the other side are mixtures, okay? So you can see that there's purple and red diatomic molecules in one box, and then in the other ones there's red diatomic molecules and these Mickey Mouse compounds. So we call those mixtures because there's not just one type of particle in there. The particulate nature of matter is between separate bits of matter, there are spaces which contain no matter. So, like, there's this stuff called interstitial space. The particulate nature of matter is that there's space between these particles, and you can think of atoms and compounds as particles. Particle diagrams show us the particles of matter and the spaces in between them. So, it shows them that, us that they're different, it shows that there is space in between them, and it's just an imaginary model of what things might look at at an atomic level. So there's some types of matter, energy, they interact. There's some types of energy that act on matter. Mechanical energy is like kinetic and potential in the system. Like if I'm cranking a crank, that's mechanical type energy. Okay. Thermal energy is the energy of an object due to kinetic energy of its atoms and or molecules. It's a one way to look at of how hot something is, how much heat something has into it. Okay. It's just thermal energy. It makes the molecules move at the atomic level. Electromagnetic energy is light 
magnetism, radio waves, all that stuff you can't really see that's outside of our visible spectrum of light. We can only see a very narrow bandwidth of the electromagnetic spectrum, but there's a lot of other stuff there, magnetic and waves traveling through space. Microwaves, gamma radiation, x-rays, all that stuff's in there. Those do interact with matter. Kinetic energy, we focus on this a lot, energy of motion. It's a measurement of how quickly atoms or molecules are moving. It's related to thermal energy, but it's not exactly the same. And then potential energy. This is the energy of position. It's like stored up. Um, this is the type of energy that's stored in chemical bonds that we'll study later on in the year. It can be turned into kinetic or thermal energy or even mechanical energy and sometimes electromagnetic energy. So all of these types of energy could be interchangeable, but we're not going into that detail this year. We just need to know that there's about five different types of energy and those will act on matter to change it. And so your Google Classroom assignment is to complete all these notes on page 17 in your pack. Complete the online portion of the homework. I put some diagrams in there for you to actually classify some particle models. And come to class ready to go over about three pages of your practice pack, boot camp. And there's a Pogel this unit. It's called Particle Diagrams and Classification of Matter. That's basically focused on this concept that you will do as a partner project with one of your buddies in class. So that's all, folks. Thanks for watching. See you later.